Good morning. Breaking news. New bombings in Iraq today after the deadliest day of violence since the war began. And this morning, the death toll continues to rise and Thursday's attacks now topping 200. View to a kill, an ex-Russian spy dies in a London hospital claiming he was poisoned by Russian agents. This morning, the Kremlin is denying it, but British police are investigating. And early bird special stores around the country are hoping to cash in on throngs of early shoppers as the holiday spending season gears into full swing today, Black Friday, November 24th, 2006. From NBC News, this is Today with Matt Lauer and Meredith Vieira, live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. Matt and Meredith have a day off this morning. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Friday morning. I'm Ann Curry. And I'm Lester Holt. Your heart has to go out to the people of Baghdad. Three years into the war, the violence just seems to be getting worse and worse. That's right. Nearly two dozen people were killed today in twin bombings in Tal Afar. And this morning, funerals are being held for some of the more than 200 civilians killed Thursday in a series of bombings and mortar attacks in Sadr City. Is Iraq spiraling out of control? We're going to have a live report from Baghdad in just a moment. Then switching gears to Black Friday, some of the nation's largest retailers are opening their doors early. This is our neighbor next door here in the plaza. I'd like to tell you the big crowd outside was to watch us this morning, but these folks have been lined up since we got here. They don't care about us. They're looking for, yeah, they're, they're looking for Nintendo, and maybe they'll come by and stop by the plaza and say hi later. But right now, they're ready to get their shopping into full gear. Take a look at what happened in Chicago this morning. Three malls opened at midnight. Look at the expressways. Man. This is after midnight. They were backed up for miles. This is a shopping rush hour that began at the beginning of Friday. It's because of all the deals? All and because, the, you know, you can shop on all Saturday. The deals and some, for some people, it is just a rush to be there on the first official <laughs> shopping day. We're going to take you to one of the nation's biggest malls in a few minutes. Then we're going to share, this is an amazing story, mm -hmm. of a young boy who suffers from autism, but he's not letting that get in the way of his dreams. He's made a film about living with the disease. He's hoping that people will see this and they'll get a better understanding of what he's going through. It's an incredibly inspiring story. You won't want to miss it. Plus, we've got the Italian singing sensation, Andrea Bocelli. He's on my iPod. I He's, he's on him. your iPod. He's singing Ave Maria and some other great songs. So great. we're happy to have him this great. morning coming up a bit later. Perfect. In the we look forward to all of that. But first, a serious subject the aftermath of a very bloody day in Iraq. NBC's Tom Aspel is in Baghdad for us again this morning. Tom, good morning. Good morning, Anne. Baghdad is locked down in an indefinite curfew after its worst ever terror attack. Many here fear there will soon be reprisals. Funeral processions this morning for some of the Shiites killed in Thursday's attacks. Winding through the slum areas of Sada City, heading for burial grounds in Najaf, south of the capital. Iraqi Prime Minister, if Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki meets President Bush in Jordan next week. And All right, Tom Astle, be safe there, there, and thank you. It is now 7.04. Now here's Lester. And thanks. Switching gears now to a tradition that has become synonymous with Thanksgiving, Black Friday, the day throngs of shoppers hit the stores at the crack of dawn for bargains, and retailers hope to make a huge profit. CNBC's Margaret Brennan is at the mall in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. Margaret, good morning. Good morning to you, Lester. And doors open here at 5 a.m. at the mall in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, one of the largest malls in the country. And this is the busiest shopping weekend of the year and one of the most profitable for stores as shoppers line up to cash in on those holiday discounts and get a jump start on their holiday shopping. Some say Ashley Reeder was born to... And, you know, watching those people, we all marvel at the people lined up. To, know. On, on, but you know what? They're organized. These are people yeah. who know exactly what they're going to buy. probably get the best I haven't meals. even thought about it right <laughs> now on my list. But. We're pathetic. Anyway, let's get a check of the rest of the morning's top stories. For that, we're going to head to the news desk and MSNBC's Allison Stewart, who's in for Ann. Well, Allison, good to see you. Good, good to see both of you. Good morning and good morning, everybody. In London, the investigation into the poisoning of a former Russian spy could now lead to a murder investigation. The former KGB agent died Thursday. And today, a stunning accusation. NBC's Donna Friesen is in London with more. Donna, good morning. Good morning, Allison. Doctors say they don't know what killed this former Russian spy, but this morning his father and friends read a statement that Alexander Litvinenko dictated just before he died, pointing the finger directly at Russian President Vladimir Putin. His death when it came... 
Allison. Donna Friesen in London reporting. Thank you, Donna. Chilling video from Gaza where a 64-year-old Palestinian grandmother became the oldest Palestinian suicide bomber. On Thursday, the detonation slightly injured two Israeli soldiers. The bomber's family claims the woman's grandson was killed in an earlier clash with troops. Back here in the States, a 24-hour hostage standoff in Chicago came to a violent end during the night. Police say the gunman and a female hostage are dead. According to officials, the gunman shot the hostage and then himself. Police say they did not fire any shots during the standoff. It was a happier than usual Thanksgiving for some families in Florida and Texas whose loved ones returned from Iraq and Kuwait just in time for the holiday. And from New York to Atlanta to San Antonio to Indianapolis and elsewhere across the country Thursday, thousands of people volunteered to serve Thanksgiving dinners to the homeless. Bit of sad news, though. Famed Broadway lyricist Betty Comden died Thursday of heart failure. For more than 60 years, she collaborated with Adolph Green to produce classics, including the stage musical On the Town and later wrote the screenplay for Singing in the Rain. Both also wrote the songs for The Party's Over and Just in Time. Betty Comden was 89 years old. A magnitude 4.5 earthquake rocked Hawaii, including Maui and Oahu, on Thursday. It caused some brief power outages, but no serious damage. And it hit in the same area where a strong earthquake hit last month. Okay, parts of Oregon and Washington were hit with heavy snow on Thursday. Well, the deep white stuff makes the skiers and the snowboarders happy. Getting to those slopes was anything but a good run. And forecasters expect more snow in that area today. It is 7-11. Back to Ann Lester and Jeff. Hey, by the way, isn't this your first uh, Thanksgiving as a married woman? It's Alex true. <laughs> I just wanted to point it's that true. out. I want to say congratulations Thank in you. a special post. Happy Thanksgiving. By the way, Al is off today because, you know, wah, wah, wah. He had to be out there in the rain for the parade. So lightweight. But we are now welcoming NBC Weather Plus meteorologist. Jeff Ranieri this morning. Welcome here. Well, good morning. Thank you for yeah. Al. Thanks for doing that. Hey, no problem at all. You know, yesterday I think that rainfall on the East Coast gave a lot of us an excuse to just eat more turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, right? I'm feeling it. Pants. Look for the expandable waistline this morning. <laughs> Not in the wardrobe. All right, but we are finding uh, some sunshine in the forecast today for you to get outside, do some exercising, maybe work off that turkey. And uh, of course, for all the shoppers out there, it's going to be beautiful in the East Coast. So while we had the rainfall yesterday, it is clearing out. Here's your forecast uh, sunny sky here in the east. Temperatures cool all the way down to Miami, 75 degrees. Probably pulling out the light jackets there in Miami. Back into the Rocky Mountains, we do have a little bit of snowfall tapering off this morning and more rainfall and more snow back in the northwest. That is your national forecast. Now here's the weather right where you are. Thank you. All right, and we have the NFL on NBC. Let's take a look at our forecast for that. Well, we've got the uh, Philadelphia Eagles and the Indianapolis Colts. And it is at an indoor stadium, but of course, all of those tailgaters concerned about the weather and the temperatures. We've got some sunshine and temperatures between 54 and 57. Again, Sunday night, the NFL on NBC. Lester? Jeff, thanks very much. With the latest violence in Iraq, worries about Iran and the assassination of a Lebanese cabinet minister this week, tensions in the Middle East are escalating. All this as President Bush travels to Jordan next week. Howard Feynman is chief political correspondent for Newsweek. And Howard, good morning. Nice to have you here. Good morning, Lester. President's going to Jordan. He's going to talk to Private Feynman. Always appreciate your insight. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Lester. It is now 717. Once again, here's Ann. Lester, thanks. From Black Friday to Cyber Monday, the internet version of the busiest shopping day begins when people get back to their computers, but consumer reporter Lisa Parker from our Chicago station WMAQ has a word of warning for parents shopping for toys. Lisa, good morning. Good morning, Anne. I am joining you surrounded by a group of brand new toys we recently purchased from online retailers. It's two said they didn't even know recalls had occurred. One called it a shipping mistake. All agreed to pull the inventory from further sale. Parents, Everyone we interviewed for this story agreed you really are the last line of defense still when it comes to recalls. And All right, Lisa Piker, Parker, good news to know. Thank you so much from our Chicago station WMAQ this morning. Thanks. Well, coming up in our next half hour, if you're dreading hitting the mall today because of all the pushing, shoving, and grumpy service you might find, well, you might want to take a look at the story we've got coming up next on rudeness in America. But first, this is today on NBC. Prepare yourself. So come here on today, a live performance 
by Italian singing sensation Andre Bocelli. His songs sometimes make me cry. Oh, he's got a because wonderful voice. Because he's so romantic. Oh, wonderful voice. Hey, in a three-hour show, do you ever wish you could take a recess, take a break? Yeah. You know? I don't know. Some people talk about the power of play. Experts say recess is one of the most important parts of your children's day. We're going to get into that and a lot more. But first, check of your local news. now on a Friday morning, November 24th, 2006. This crowd is either getting an early start to join us or they just want to be first in line when the score is open. But we'll take it either way. It was nice at Lester's. It's a lot warmer than it was it's yesterday for the parade. In fact, a lot of these folks are sitting in the blue here. They were, right. you, you were, ah! They're from a, a marching band from Tucson. They were in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I'm and they're from you, Jasper, Indiana, Jasper, too. I'm, I'm surprised you're not all down with a death of cold. <laughs> Watching you in the rain yesterday, that was amazing. Great performance. It's been good to have you here. Good to have everybody here on this Black Friday, the big shopping day. Lester Holt along good with Ann Chloe. Here. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Matt and Meredith will be back on Monday. And coming up this half hour, we're going to introduce you to an amazing young man who has autism. That's right. In fact, when he was younger, he couldn't even wave as much as wave goodbye to his parents. Well, now he's a filmmaker and using his skills with the camera to raise the curtain on his world, giving others an idea about what it's like to be autistic. Autistic. And, you know, I'm really interested in this because I think that we really don't understand. And this is an opportunity for us to see more. And you clearly. never hear it from that perspective. Exactly. So it's really worth sticking around and watching. An amazing story. Then we're going to switch gears and talk about recess. We all remember the joy when we were mm. kids in grade school. And you'd get recess. It would be 20 minutes, even a half hour long sometimes. We always but look forward to it. It's the only thing, the best part of my day. Yeah, it's, it's become controversial. The, the midday play idea has been the subject to some recent debate. Some schools have shrunk it to just a few minutes in favor of more academics. But there are experts they say that's a bad idea, that it's part of the pro developmental process that kids need that recess break. So, so we'll we're going to delve into all of that to help parents with that. But first, we're going to talk about rude America. Are you tired of people cutting you off in traffic, in line, or in conversation? Yeah. Yes! In fact, the everyday rude action seems endless. So is there a loss of civility in our country these days? Here's our own Matt Lauer. With U.S. population recently hitting the 300 million mark, it's no secret our country is growing and our way of life is changing. In our high-tech, high-stress, overscheduled, overpriced, complicated lives, has common courtesy taken a back seat? <laughs> Celebrities behaving badly have become a form of entertainment. Turn on the evening news and you'll find out of control parents. This dad faces felony child abuse charges for hitting his son's teammate. Extreme examples, but if you feel bad behavior is becoming more commonplace, you're not alone. Peter Post, an etiquette expert who studied these issues for years. I think we probably have the opportunity to be ruder today. We live in a faster paced society, we live in a more informal society, we live in a society where people are uh, interacting in ways we didn't used to. In one of the most extensive studies done on the subject, New York based think tank Public Agenda found that 79% of Americans said they believe a lack of respect and courtesy is a serious problem. Some of the more common complaints won't surprise you. Rudeness in driving, they see litter, they see kids swearing on the street. People do think this is a deterioration of our society. And one of the most irritating behaviors, no, no. bad Perfect cell phone time. manners. It's inconsiderate cell phone manners. Get this, it was a chick. Not just in theaters, our cameras found these offenders on the bus and in cafes. This bookstore, no longer a quiet zone. This Gabby shopper blocked others from leaving to finish her conversation. We may be more connected than ever before, but are the very devices that are making us more accessible also creating a divide? It's very easy to be a lot ruder when we don't have to look the person in the eye. So we can fire off the email that's perhaps a little bit more caustic. Rude service is another major complaint. 46% of Americans polled say they've walked away from a potential sale because of bad service. American business is paying a price for that. This ad for Liberty Mutual plays on a nostalgia for kindness.
for many, the complaint is not getting any service at all. All of our reservation sales agents are currently assisting other customers. Your approximate wait time is four minutes. When this AOL user finally reached a human to cancel his account, he almost wasn't allowed to. Okay. So when you use a sign to use the computer, I'm saying, is that for business or for... Dude, what for difference school? does it make? I don't want the AOL account anymore. Can we please cancel it? Last year was 540, last month was 545 hours of usage. I don't know how to make this any clearer, so I'm just going to say it one last time. Cancel the account. Well, please. explain to me what's what, why. I'm not explaining what? anything to you. Cancel okay. the account. Travelers are among the least satisfied with service. 52% say rudeness is a major source of stress. JetBlue markets the most basic services as a novelty in this tongue-in-cheek ad. A woman asked me for a soda, so I gave it to her with ice. So the ice acts as a chewing agent. Sometimes people want to sit together, so I see them next to each other. And what about old-fashioned chivalry? Does it still exist? With the help of hidden cameras, we asked this eight months pregnant Manhattan woman to find out. The last few weeks, my back's really started to hurt, especially because I, I carry a laptop every day to work. And so try to, where I can, get off my feet and, and to rest. But not every commuter is willing to help. Or they tend to put their papers up and kind of ignore the fact that I'm standing right there. This woman sees Tamarin, but decides to keep reading. These passengers ignore her altogether. People do not walk around being intentionally rude. They're focused on their little world, and they, they don't want to acknowledge the outside world around them. The good news, well, for at least half of the rides she took, some kind riders did put Tamron's needs before their own. I'm glad people stood up for her absolutely. finally. Absolutely. I think anyway. most times people will. Yeah, I would. You would, yeah, wouldn't absolutely. you? Absolutely. That's, that's the number one train. We ought to do it. Let's lay down the gauntlet. That's if right. you ever see a pregnant woman, you should definitely do that. Anyway, let's go get a check of the weather. And in for Al today is our NBC Weather Plus meteorologist, Jeff Ranieri. Hey, Jeff. Today's weather is brought to you by V-Smile. It turns game time into brain time. Uh, well, thanks a lot there, Ann and Lester. We have a great crowd out here this morning. It's cool, but not too cold for some alum here from... From Auburn, Alabama. And uh, they are the War Eagles, right? Yeah. All right, we've got our, one of our technical directors back there as a uh, alum as well. We have a, not a Christmas carol, but a uh, chant from... From Auburn. Let's hear it. Yes. War <laughs> Eagle! Hey! Yay, Auburn! All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our national forecast. Uh, and we have some clearing weather out here for all of you shoppers. We have a lot of shoppers here today. Yeah. Right, we've got some sunny skies that we're headed out on park today in New York. Also more sunshine in the southeast and the northwest. The snow and the rain sticks with us. More heavy snow in the mountains and looking for, well, on Sunday, more clearing here across the entire nation. So if you're going to stand in lines and do a lot of that shopping, uh, well, we've got some great weather for you in the forecast. But unfortunately, still a wet, nasty mess in the northwest. That is a look at your national forecast. Now here's the weather right where you are. Thank you. And we had some folks from Auburn over there, and we also have some Texans down here. Yeah. Corpus Christi, Texas, Dr. Crocker's Corpus office. Christi. All right, well, thank you so much for coming out. We have a lot of people uh, out here in the plaza this morning. We're gonna try to talk to as many as we ha can. Take like attack of the blue coats over there. All right. Lester, back to you. All right, Jeff, thanks very much. Now to a window on a world sometimes misunderstood. As many as a half million families in America have a family member who has been diagnosed with autism. Now, one young filmmaker in England is doing his part to share his experiences with the rest of us. Here's NBC's Donna Friesen. Story will still to come on today. It happened again this year. You've got more turkey and stuffing left over than you thought. Well, we've got some delicious ideas for your leftover goodies. In fact, if you haven't had breakfast, stick around. It's a really cool idea for cranberries. Then up next, the reasons for recess. Why some doctors say free play is vital to your child's development. It's all coming up, but first, these messages.